Ahoy fellow potato pirates! Today we will be unboxing the game Enter the Spudnet, a board game about potatoes and cyber security. First up, we have the game board, which is the Spudnet overlaid over the map of the Carbomian Seas. Awesome stuff, isn't it? Looks pretty cyber to me. It also comes with an instruction manual, but let's face it, no one reads that. That's why I'm here. There are a deck of ability cards. There's 20 of them in the base game. There are also 6 sets of player tokens and a set of common tokens that any player can use. Finally, there are a set of reference cards with the basic rules to get started playing easily. Start by getting each player choose a set of colored tokens. I laid out a set of player tokens here. Each set has 5 potato order tokens, 6 ships, 2 warehouses, two firewalls, and one eight-sided die. In the game, you play as a potato pirate and start with two warehouses in your colored zone. Deploy ships from your warehouses to orders that are scattered all over the Sputnet. Let's begin, shall we? First, we need to locate our potato orders on the map. Roll your die for each zone to locate where your orders are in that zone. For example, I rolled a 5 for the pink zone, so I will put my potato order on pink node 5. Repeat this for the other zones except your zone. Since I'm the purple player, I will roll and place orders for all zones except my zone. Once done, each player should have 5 potato orders on the board. Next, you will set up warehouses in your own zone. You cannot put on nodes that already have tokens on them, and can only place them on empty ones in your zone. At the end of the setup stage, every player should have two warehouses in their zone and five potato orders that they need to fulfill in each of their zones. The objective of the game is to send your ships from your warehouses to your potato orders in the other zones. Once your ship lands on the order token, the order is fulfilled. Be the first to fulfill all five to win the game. Trust me, it's not that easy as it seems. You'll see in a while. Now that the game is set up, we are ready to play. Let's go through how to play a round. A round consists of three phases, draft, place and action. In the draft phase, you get to draft ability cards to aid you or disrupt others. Just a quick note, not all cards will be in play. You can see the recommended recipes in the given manual. For 3 to 4 players, choose 12 cards, and for 5 to 6 players, choose 16 cards. Once you have decided the cards to use in the game, choose the starting player. It could be the player who last ate potatoes or fries, I don't know, I'm sure you'll come up with something. The starting player will shuffle the chosen deck and draw cards up to the number of players plus 1. For example, if there are 4 players, draw 5 cards. Then secretly choose one card and pass the rest onto the player in the left. Repeat this until the last player chooses the card. Discard the last card facing up in the discard pile. And everyone will end up with one card each. Good luck figuring out who has what. The place phase is pretty simple. Just place a ship on each of your warehouse and prepare to dispatch them to your orders. That's about it. In the action phase, players take turns to move their ships. Each ship can move up to two nodes. You can choose to move all your ships or just some. Once the ship lands on your order token, the order is then fulfilled. So remove both ships and order tokens from your board. You can use your ability cards on your turn. This ability cards let me spawn another ship on a warehouse. It's pretty awesome. I get to fulfill another order using it. Discard your card after use. After you are done with your actions, move on to the player on your left. He chooses to play an ability card before moving. The static route card allows him to place an arrow token on a node, which helps direct the flow of ships. When a ship lands on that node, it can only move in that direction indicated by the arrow. Tokens added to the board last for the entire game unless removed by certain events. 
He continues his turn by moving his ships, and we move on to the pink player's turn. She uses the botnet card, which lets her launch bot ships in two zones. To do that, she first chooses the purple and orange zones, and then she rolls her player die. Now that she rolled a 3, she will place a bot ship on nodes labeled 3 in her chosen zones. Bot ships cannot be used to fulfill orders and are simply there to destroy others. Once she is done moving her ships, it's the last player's turn. The last player used a firewall card. He gets to place a firewall token on a route. This allows him to control which ships can pass through that route. In this case, my path is blocked, so I have a huge detour to fulfill my order in the green zone. Or I could twist his arm and make him let my ship pass through. <laughs> he continues his turn by moving his ships. The map wraps around so he moves his ships from the green to the pink zone across the board. He cannot move onto the node with a pink ship though, because they will collide. We will touch on ship collisions later. That's it. Once the last player ends his turn, the action phase is over. Discard all used cards, you can only keep a maximum of one card at the end of the round. Another point to note, there are cards that can be played on your turn, and there are cards that can be played in any time. You can see it written below in the card description. We have just finished the complete round. Now that we know the game better, let's play the next round for real. Repeat the same phases, draft, place and action. The starting player of the round will rotate clockwise, so it's now the player on my left who gets to draft first. Lastly, I will go through a couple of rules on ship movement. When a ship moves past onto a node that has another ship, they will collide and both will be discarded from the game. That's unless they are both on a warehouse. Warehouses act like shipping ports, so they can house multiple ships. However, if more than three ships are on a particular warehouse, that warehouse is overloaded. Or in cybersecurity terms, the blue player is DDoSed. He will have to shut down and reset all his systems. All ships on his warehouse will be discarded. No ships can enter the blue warehouse in this round. And all blue ships and blue firewall tokens on the board will also be discarded. Yeah, it ain't pretty. Build your defenses before it's too late. And that's it. I think you're all caught up with the rules. Combine epic strategies and abilities to form creative ways to sabotage your opponents. Are you ready to enter the Sputnet? Have a blast playing the game and good luck! Support us on Kickstarter today!